everyone. Welcome to this session of Demo Fest. Uh, this is going, going to be with Mark Green. The title is Story of Crafting Your Message for Maximum Results. Demo Fest is, is hosted by Consensus. We help pre sales teams to scale with intelligent demo automation. And uh, we're going to be recording this session. We'll post the links to the recording in about two weeks to our scaling pre sales and engineering LinkedIn group. So we encourage you to join the group. I'll post the group, the uh, link to the group in the chat here in just a minute. And just to introduce Mark Green, uh, he is a technology evangelist at Sage, and he's been doing this for over 20 years, continuing his technical messaging as a technology evangelist was a really uh, fulfilling and natural progression for Mark. Sage supports the beating heart of thousands of amazing businesses across the world. And he's been proud to champion the technical prowess of Sage's medium business segments. And so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Mark, and you can pull screen share away from me and, and start your presentation. We'll have 30 to 40 minutes from Mark. And, and with the last 10 or so minutes, we'll have a Q&A. If you'd like to post questions throughout in the Q&A feature, we'll uh, address those at the end. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, yes. So, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Green. Uh, welcome to Story Crafting for Maximum Results. Uh, I am a technology evangelist at Sage, which means I'm still in the pre-sales world, uh, but uh, it was obviously my favorite world ever. Um, but I spend my time supporting my colleagues uh, with technical expertise. Yes, the really difficult technical questions and RFPs still find their way through to me. So don't worry, I've not escaped that fun. Um, but I help also help shape our wider technology platform message across uh, Sage X3, Sage People and Sage Intact. Uh, I've spent the last 20 years connecting people and technology. Uh, technology, I can just do, that's fine. Some people can just do maths, so I'm very jealous of them. Um, but it's the uh, communication that excites me. Um, connecting people's emotions and understanding people is just the greatest thing in the whole world. And it turns out pre-sales is pretty good for that. Um, I led an IT focused path through uh, the wonderful worlds of manufacturing, distribution, retail, the MOD services and software companies. Uh, but uh, it's pre-sales that excites me really because it's more than just listing functionality or stepping on stage and reading out loud the training manual. It's understanding people and connecting with people. I, I help run the pre-sales leadership forum every month in London, which is obviously now gone virtual, uh, which is great because people can visit very easily. Uh, alongside Don Carmichael, who's presenting tomorrow at 11 a.m. UTC minus six, which is British summertime, 6 p.m. So, uh, and there is also on the pre-sales panel where there'll be giveaways apparently. So let's hope there's, there's uh, webcams in the giveaways, who knows? So I used to tell a great story about how my girlfriend and I went over to Austin in Texas, where my brother lives, to visit him, my, my brother and his wife and their dog called Puffin. Uh, Puffin is amazing, by the way. Um, and whilst we were there, um, outdoor in a sunny bar, um, we were also on a, on a call with my grandma. Now, she was apologising because the video call quality and the signal was pretty bad. Now, she was saying that her iPad battery was pretty low because she'd been playing Puzzle Bubble. Well, she's 93 years old. So to be do using an iPad anyway is pretty impressive. Um, so we'll let her off the technicalities of uh, battery versus signal strength, certainly. Now, telling a story, I was telling you that, that story, yes, okay, it's about the value of FaceTime. But the reason, or one of the reasons that it worked so well, is that it, we are mo most of us are likely to have had a grandma or have a grandma, and usually feelings of love and attachment are connected with that. So I've just made your brain think about grandmas or brothers or wives or girlfriends or puppies um, and released some happy chemicals uh, in doing so. Now this is a pre-sales emotional superpower because just the, um, the way that if I can make somebody else's brain, if, if I can choose what their brain thinks, well, you, that is a superpower and if you use it wisely and respectfully then you'll be a pre-sales hero. 
So these days, I tend to just say that without video calls, my grandma would be in anybody apart from her carer in two months. So no wonder webcams are sold out right now. So I'm going to stop the video and I've got some good things to show you. Okay. So, I'm sure you can all see, see my screen now. So, we're going to be talking about four main things today. We're going to be talking about uh, a recipe for every great story what makes up the stories that we craft, the science behind those stories, crafting business story arcs, how do we turn those stories into actually useful things that we can use here, and then why we tell stories, why are we telling that particular story. It's very important to make sure we don't just rabble on about every single story we ever heard. So there's also an exclusive download at the end, which I think it's pretty exciting. Not as exciting as this photo. This was me tired in Sydney. So I was there, it was actually my birthday, uh, but I absolutely exhausted um, at a restaurant, uh, barely able to lift my head off the table. Uh, I was there with a colleague, we were helping train some channel partners with uh, installing and using some new software than my previous company. And Sunday, it was working fine. Sunday morning it was fine. We checked the machines and then we found 25 virtual machines that were running on hardware back in Farnborough had just stopped working. We couldn't connect to them. It didn't work. IT wasn't there because they came in on a Monday morning. So what did we do? Well, thanks to the, the AWS cloud, we fired up some machines, set them up, did the training, and the, the uh, attendees were none the wiser. So the lesson there is be prepared, use the cloud, save the day, even if you do end up totally exhausted at the end of it anyway. So just telling a story doesn't necessarily mean a great connection with the audience. I've just told you a story about myself, but I have no idea if it connects effectively. This, however, the opposite is terrible. So presentations certainly don't work showing slides like this. Uh, but storytelling isn't new. I mean, people have been telling stories for thousands of years, passing on information to order in audiences around campfires, auditoriums filled with tales of woe and love. So if you're not crafting your message in the form of a story, you're just reading out information with no hope of people actually remember it, rem remembering it. And don't worry, there aren't 147 slides today. So how do we create the recipe for a great story? How do people listen? What causes them to remember and believe in what you're saying? Pizza. Sausage pizza, definitely my favorite. And I know in the US they call them pies. So this is gonna be our pie chart, isn't it beautiful? But back at college in Farnborough, England, where huge amounts of pizza were consumed, sat on a beautiful, warm, sunny day, all those years ago in my psychology class, a spark ignited into a love of learning why people think what they think, say what they say, and do what they do. Now, the psychology behind crafting an effective message is what gets me out of bed every single day. A bold statement indeed, but to wield the ability to connect successfully with other people feels, as I said, like a superpower and one that I'm lucky to have, and as pre-sales folk, you'll know it too. It's shaped my whole career, and that's why today I'm sharing my passion with you. As you see, I also have a passion for pizza, but you probably guessed that by now. So widely regarded as the founding father of communication theory, Aristotle's work on ethos, the credibility, logos, the logic or data, or, and pathos, 
appealing to the emotions, shows that these three aspects should make up every, every single influential message. And what's more, new research builds on this theory, showing that 10% of your message should be about ethos. Talk about why you're credible. Why should they listen to you? Perhaps you've got a wealth of experience in your audience's market, or perhaps you've worked with many companies over the years that your listeners can relate to. Proving you're worth listening to doesn't have to be a list of CV-worthy items, though. But people love learning new things, so why not position yourself as a knowledgeable person or thought leader in a relevant field? 25% logic. Find some statistics, some facts, some numbers. This is the raw data that backs up the message that you're telling. Perhaps find some, something relevant to the people that you're talking to. In fact, it doesn't even have to be directly proving your point, but bringing people new information about a related subject they're interested in keeps them engaged and believe the story that you're telling has meaning and real world impact. 65%, oh, this is the killer. This is the big one. This above all else is the most important aspect of any presentation or talk. Stories have been the bedrock of our society for thousands of years. So it's an irrefutable truth that our brains are wired to engage far better with stories than with any other kind of message. People even train themselves to remember the exact or ran order of a random number of lists. So random number lists or a shuffled deck of cards by telling a story about which card is in which room or shop as they walk down the street. Now, personal stories make people engage more than any other type. So remember, you'll connect with your audience far better if you take them on a little journey of your own examples. Now, the human brain is wired to spot authenticity. So belief in what you're talking about also helps. If you don't believe it yourself, why should somebody believe you? So look up Brian Stevenson's TED talk, We Need to Talk About Injustice deemed Ted's most persuasive talk ever. He matched these percentages exactly. So when you're next putting together a presentation, a meeting or a webinar just like this, look at which parts fall into which category, credibility, evidence and emotional appeal. Perhaps you have some that show your company's stats, profits and employees. Some might have customer references and experience with similar issues in your, that your customers are facing. And some might be the story of how you can, you can address their pains in ways that connect directly to their desired outcomes. So these processes work because they're based on the, how the human brain understands and recalls information and how that information is stored in our brains. Today, scientists are using MRI machines and they've proved blood flow activity in different parts of the brain, tracking what happens when we listen to stories and the results are clear. If you want to craft a message with a maximum impact, remember the 10, 25, 65% rule. So what we're going to do now is make a note using Mark's top tips. So I'd like you to pick a colour, please. Excellent, you picked blue. Excellent work. And that means that people are really going to be able to see it on the video. So let's, uh, let's write this one now. So 65 percent, 65% emotion, right, that's good. Another bonus top tip, always have really good uh, whiteboard pens. You can thank Don Carmichael for that bit of advice. That's worked very, very well indeed. Right, cool. So we've got that top tip. Uh, let's have a look at what not to do. This is an example of somebody who, have, who has loads of credibility. There's loads of data available, available to the people watching but totally no connection with anybody in the room. And it definitely wasn't memorable. 
So let's see instead what maximum impact could look like. Well, once upon a time in a stage, in a room far, far away, I told a story of the three little pigs to a bunch of very unsuspecting people. The stage was set very much like this. They dimmed the lights and I walked on the stage onto a video like this. Now, this is just a static image of it, but if you've got Netflix, you've probably seen this before. So I'm going to tell you exactly that story right now. I've had a message that screen sharing has gone. Well, if it continues to be a problem, please do let me know. We shall see. We have the technology, or at least Taylor Jeffrey does. So we will continue with this story. You sitting comfortably? I hope so. Right, so we're gonna go through this story. Imagine I'm still on stage. You're sat there in your conference room chair that's very uncomfortable, but you're imagining it that it's a, a comfy fireplace at home. And then we'll work out why and how this story connects. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs and the time came for them to leave home and seek their fortunes. Before they left, their mother told them, whatever you do, do it the best that you can, because that's the way to get along in the world. The first little pig built his house using guesswork because that was the easiest thing to do. The second little pig built his house using spreadsheets. This was a little bit stronger than the guesswork house, the third little pig used his, built his house using data warehouse and analytics software. One night, the big bad wolf of Wall Street, who dearly loved to, to eat little accounting piggies, came along and saw the first little pig in his house of guesswork. Let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And I'll find out your predictive analysis of the quarterly sales results and nothing but a finger in the air. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig, but of course the wolf did blow down the house and he ate the first little pig. The wolf then came to the second house, a house of spreadsheets. Let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll bring down this feeble structure of overcomplicated formulas and documents which no one can remember how they were created and hopefully that they won't break as we can't fix them. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig, but the, house wolf, but the wolf blew that house down too and ate the second little pig. The wolf then came to the house of data warehouse and analytics software. Let me in, let me in, cried the wolf. Or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll pick apart your annual statements and easy to integrate data sources with super reliable smart connectors and real language report building. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the pig. Well, the wolf huffed and he puffed, but he could not blow down that house of such strong foundations. But as the wolf was sly and old, it wasn't his first time trying to destroy best practice software architecture and data planning. So he climbed up on the roof to look for a way into the third house. The little pig saw the wolf climb up onto the roof and lit a roaring fire, just like the one you can see on the screen, or you could see on the screen before. When the wolf finally found a hole in the chimney, he crawled down and kersplash, right into that cauldron of water. And that was the end of the little pig's troubles with the big bad wolf. The next day, the little pig invited his mother over. She said, you see, it's just as I told you. The way to get along in the world is not to use guesswork, not to use outdated methods of financial reporting, but take the opportunity to do something great with your company, its data and its future. Fortunately for that little pig, he learned that lesson and he just lived happily ever after. Now.
you can't do all your business presentations like that. Uh, and, but you can't also can't do all of your business on stage. So you have to craft your message for maximum impact. Uh, at this point, I will check that if there is anybody who is unable to see the slides, I will double check it. John Cook can see them. We'll go with that. Thanks, John. So lots of people can see the fireplace. Yes, it's good, isn't it? Uh, yes, no, I do like that. Go Netflix. Um, so craft your message for maximum impact. You've got a short amount of time on stage and you're not gonna do all of your business during that interaction, especially as it's pretty much one way. What you can do is be memorable offer something exclusive to those people who come and find you after your presentation. And in fact, that's what's happened here. Because my call to action was to come and find me at the back of the room straight afterwards. And I could tell who was really interested because I got loads of business cards. Great for creating prospect interaction. So don't forget, I'll be providing you a link to an exclusive download uh, for you lucky people at the end of this presentation today. So how can we connect to people's emotions? The Three Little Pigs is not your usual business presentation, that's for sure. And on the day, I also carried on with some more relevant specific information for the people in the room afterwards. But it was carefully calculated to make sure that the message was received by the audience loud and clear, even if they didn't realize it. Still, to this day, I asked my colleagues about the Three Little Pigs and they can remember the advantages of data and analytics platforms over spreadsheets. Now, I'm not saying you should get up on stage and talk about pigs and wolves, but you can craft a business presentation for impact, and I'll show you how to do that now. So how can we connect to people's emotions? By using science. Thankfully, though, all the scientific work has already been done by very, very clever people. So let's delve into what they found and how we can use it effectively to craft every single presentation for maximum effect. So let's have a look at the science behind the stories. I'm going to talk to you about a huge research effort, digitizing books called the Gutenberg Project, and the great advances in our human understanding leading from the data that they collected. Enter the U University of Vermont's Computational Story Laboratory. They took 51,250 Project Gutenberg books, filtered them to just 18,561 fiction books, and then placed a sliding fixed sized window across the entire run of text. They processed each, books, each book, the relationship of, e of each of the words, the ebbs and the flows of the relationships they formed. The average happiness was therefore generated, which they then plotted as sentiment scores with a hedonometer so for each story, they ended up with a graph that shows the peaks and troughs of happiness. Once they did that, they had to minimize the variances. And you can see on the right hand side, if you get really, really, really close, or you're using a really, really big screen, some of the books listed here. And the story happiness shapes they created. With so many different stories, they had to use hierarchical clustering to correlate their results together and did so with this dendrogram. Let's not get too involved in the detail, but what they found was six distinct correlations indicating six different emotional arcs. You'll see six clearly defined shapes then appear. We call these the story arcs. And we can use these to craft stories for different effects. They've been used, as it turns out, for hundreds of years already without us even knowing, although there are some people in history that took a pretty good guess. So now we have six clear shapes. Let's see what they do when they're used, because some we don't want to use at all unless we want to fail, uh, when, we, when we're shaping business stories. 
although some are still great for the movies. We've got rags to riches. You can see on the right hand side, there's a rise. And there's various other ones, Tragedy, Man in the Hole, Icarus, Cinderella, Oedipus. But I'm going to tell you the story of Icarus, this number four. Icarus was the son of a famous craftsman, Daedalus, in Greek mythology. His father was the creator of the labyrinth, a huge maze located under the court of King Minos of Crete, where the Minotaur, a half-man, half-bull creature, lived. In order for the secret of the labyrinth to be kept, Minos had, had then imprisoned Daedalus and Icarus in a tower above his palace. Daedalus managed to create two sets of wings for himself and his son that were made of feathers glued together with wax. He taught Icarus how to fly and warned him, don't fly too high, which would cause the wax to melt, nor too low, which would cause the feathers to get wet with seawater. Together, they flew out of the tower towards freedom. However, Icarus soon forgot his father's warnings and started flying higher and higher until the wax started melting under the scorching sun. His wings dissolved and he fell into the sea and was drowned. You'll see that we can plot that on the Icarus arc. This is Icarus's story arc, as you can see. He was in prison. We've fallen in love with him. He's got a dad. They're in, in there together. Tension. They make some wings from wax and feathers. This is going to be great. The release. They escape. Fantastic. Ah, but flies too close to the sun, falls into the sea, dead in the water. Right, so we obviously don't want our story to end up dead in the water. So let's not use that. Let's get rid of all of the story arcs that end with a fall. I'm sure they're going to be great for some movies and some poems and some other stories. But in business, trying to get a message across and connect effectively, I have found that these are the ones to concentrate on. In my experience, Cinderella number five gives the best opportunity to include a customer pains and address them, show how we can help and the benefits to the customer. And I always use this one to good effect. You can probably tell what's coming. Here is a, a copyright proof version of Cinderella. As it turns out, Disney owns all the rights to Cinderella, so we'll let them. I think if Cinderella had a, actually had a mobile phone back in the day, the story would have been very different. But for now, we will imagine. There once was a fine gentleman who had a beautiful, gentle daughter of his own, and she was soon to become the servant of her evil stepmother and stepsisters. They made her do all the chores around the house, and she was named Cinderella, after the cinders she swept out of the fireplace. Sadly, Cinderella wasn't allowed to go to the huge ball put on by the king. After his sisters left for the ball, Cinderella's fairy godmother appeared and changed her dirty rags to a beautiful gown with glass slippers. Next, the fairy godmother changed a pumpkin into a coach and some mice into footmen. Before Cinderella left, the fairy godmother warned her to be home before midnight because the spell would only last until then. Now, Cinderella was a hit at the ball. The prince fell in love with her and asked for her name. But just then the clock struck midnight and Cinderella had to run away. She was in such a hurry, she lost one, one of her glass slippers. It was the only clue the prince had to find his true love. He went to every home in the kingdom and had every single girl try on the slipper to see if it fit. Even the evil stepsisters tried, but they couldn't fit the slipper. And then he found Cinderella and it fitted. And the prince married her and they all lived happily ever after. So let's have a look to see what the story arc of Cinderella is. We fall in love with Cinderella. It gives us someone to root for, encourage and hope that they do well. But there's a baddie. The, she leaves, 
she, she loves the prince, but she leaves the party and the prince may never find her. Now, tension. Tension is probably one of the most important parts of this because if everything's just rosy, well, that's a nice story, but it's not really going to be very impactful, is it? But the more tension that you can bring, the more people want that tension to be resolved and the more people were looking for a hero. Well, isn't it handy? You can come along and either be the hero or help the customer be the hero. So what we're going to do then is stop sharing, turn on the video and write top tip number two. Again, do you want to pick a colour? Yes, excellent. Blue again. Consistent. I like it. That's pre-sales for you. You got it right. I, I like that. So the second top tip is create tension. Excellent. Right. So let's get back to these three little piggies and work out, work out what all that was about. So I'm going to turn my video off and start sharing my screen again. Okay. So you'll see that when the, when the three little pigs were going through their story arc, they had a little one as well. They were building the house. That's great. They had a mum. Big bad wolf arrives. Well, that's definitely the baddie, right? Tension. Well, two houses have already been blown down. If we didn't know the story of the three little pigs already, we'd be pretty worried for that third little pig. But it's fine, isn't it? Because the hero, the stronger house, stays standing. And the release at the end, wolf ends in the cooking pot. All very happy in the and we fell in love with them and it's great at the start that it's got, got a mum we're all really connecting now because most people have uh, got them however i i do i do admit that life is life is not a fairy tale uh not most of the time anyway so let's have a look how we can how, how can we understand this story arc but for business purposes so let's change the pigs to a more business orientated story. There's an advisor that tells them to do something properly. The pigs make bad choices. Market forces take down the competitors. Are they going to take down the, the, the third one as well? But no, because the, the big ha had a hero, good BI, saw danger coming, planned well and reacted in time. Now we all have our own version of the big bad wolf, whether it's market forces, internal or external forces in your company or COVID-19 is the biggest baddest wolf going at the moment but if you create a story arc like this you'll be able to create that impact in your presentations as well whomever it is you're trying to persuade work out who the protagonist is so usually the customer the baddie, usually the painful situations that they've explained to you in the, in the discovery. And we all know how important discoveries are. Unless you have years of industry credibility, don't just tell the customer they're doing it wrong. True to my pre-sales heart, I love a good discovery. Add some tension. And the more you add, the more heroic the hero is going to be. And then IT gets new software there, implemented quickly and easily. So staff can now do their jobs really well. Now you've made the hero the customer. So the customer IT is going to be the hero there. Well, everybody's happy. The staff can, staff can work, productivity increases right at that happy moment. Will you let us make you the hero? Well, I mean... Yes, please. Please help let us be the hero. You've shown it so well. We, that's a great idea. And you can use it for all sorts of things. 
difficult software. We've had a look at that, but warehouse issues, perhaps. Christmas rush. This could be the most important time of any retail company's year, but a messy warehouse and unhappy staff, and then a huge amount of orders taken at last minute. Oh, this is a bad situation. Get, about, get us out of this. New, easy to use warehouse software. Brilliant. All deliveries go out correctly. Create the call to action there. Let them be the hero and they'll, you'll have them on side. Might be marketing. New marketing company. Really tough competition and short time scales. But with really good market insights and a well-received campaign will be, be the result. Then put your call to action at that happy moment. All the people in the room, whether it's a physical room or a virtual room, make that happy moment then. Watch your next movie and see if you can pick which arc they used. And whilst obviously a movie can be more complex, I bet you nailed the tension point and realized that it wouldn't have worked if you didn't love the main character. It could be making tax digital issues, really important these days. The finance team, we can fall in love with them. They've got a tough job to do. So the buddy comes along, they've got making tax digital, digital compliance to sort out. They can't just submit it via the website. They need a piece of software. The deadline is getting closer and closer and closer. But it's okay. The new bit of software has got MTD built in. So all the taxes paid correctly and easily. Call to action. Just please, just please, really don't do this. And it happens totally by accident, more the times than you'd realize. So place your call to action at the end of a deathly spiral into the sea and you'll just look best place to help their business fail. Can we help your business fail? No. This is really important. I know you're super keen to show all the cool things at the start of the presentation and it'll get them excited. Perhaps you're, you're worried a senior key stakeholder might leave the room. But if you've crafted love for the customer and then show you understand the pains correctly, that stakeholder is gonna stay in the room. This suddenly turned into an important meeting they need to be part of. Then, of course, you know the hero is coming over the hill to save the day. What's more, you've made it his or her team the hero. They will become your champion if you get your call to action right. But as I said, I've found great success in the Cinderella story. I've seen so many failures due to the accidental plummets into the sea. Even this presentation is a story. Because, <laughs> of course, you knew it was going to be, right? So, attendees, pre-sales is awesome. I'm fairly sure we're already on board with that, but it does sound nice to say. <laughs> Buddy, other people use stories for maximum results. Are you using stories for maximum results? Well, we should learn this. But that's fine, because there's crafting stories at DemoFest. And the release is, you are even more awesome. Um, and the call to action is attend more demo fest. There are two, de there's two days of demo fest. Just imagine how awesome everyone's gonna be at the end of that. So, how to craft your own arc. Customer is them. Pain, time, them plus you, and goals. Use this template arc boxes write the call to action you want to achieve at the start so write that first and then lead naturally to a conclusion that they will end up really wanting so we've got we've magically got to tip number three and tip number four so i'm going to turn my video on stop the screen sharing and we're going to pick a color again blue again you guys and gals, you're just making it easy for me now. That's so kind. So, make them the hero. Make them the hero because you can be the hero, fine. 
but you're not really there to say how amazing you are. You're there to say amazing you really believe they can be if you help them because you understand them. And tip number four. Can you guess this one? Don't end in the sea. Don't end in the sea. Don't end by accident in the sea. Don't craft an amazing story at the start and then sort of peter off at the end. And uh, yeah, bit of, sort of sad. So then we are going to switch that off, start sharing my screen again. Right. So you've seen how to craft a story. Let's spend the last few minutes talking about why we're doing so. So Paul Smith is a legend when it comes to crafting effective stories. In fact, you should go and see his, the amazing work that he's done on the 10 types of stories that great leaders tell. There's a link at the end of this presentation and also you can Google it. Now I know his are about leaders, but we're all leaders. Pre-sales should lead the conversation and help customers in their journey. Perhaps it's a story about the history of the company that you work for, or how you've helped other companies understand how to get through the change that they know they need to make. Perhaps that's, that's through buying, through having a really good vision for where, they, where you could take them. Maybe it's a story about the strategy that you can do, use to do that, and the values that you will maintain through that journey to make sure that it's a positive outcome. You can have stories about customers, reference stories, where it's gone well in the past, sales stories. You'll see that there's no pre-sales one on here because pre-sales can be all of them. Marketing, personal recruitment, there's so many different stories. But make sure that what you're crafting has a purpose. Plan it with your team. So in pre-sales, you might be called on for any of these, but what, so why not think about it? Have some ready in, the back, in your back pocket to use if you're asked. So let's have a look at what we've covered today. We've covered the recipe for every great story, 10, 25, 65%. Remember, pathos, connecting to people's emotions, really helps that logic and data to hit home. The science behind the stories, we learned about Project Gutenberg and the six story arcs that came out of all of that research that they did. We learned about crafting business story arcs, how to understand how human brains work with stories. You can use that now in a business sense. You've seen how the Cinderella story arc is the most effective in my experience and we've learned what not to do as well and I've seen it so many times. I'm sure you have too. So we've also looked at why you're telling a story. So practice your snippets because they could come in handy at any time. So as promised at the start, you've been all very good and listened well, there is a, a Demo Fest 2020 exclusive download. It's a download template that can help you shape your Cinderella story arcs, and it's only available during Demo Fest. So go and grab it quickly, and don't forget there'll be lots more of interactive fun on LinkedIn in the group that uh, Consensus is sharing. So in summary, I'd like to thank all of you lot for attending and for being totally awesome pre-sale people and connected to the pre-sales world. Darren Hess at Consensus for putting this show on and all of the people that are helping him there as well. Don Car Carmichael for inspiration and, and uh, a general all round good guy. And Alex Watson at Sage for giving me the time and opportunity to do this. 
So I'm going to turn my video back on, stop sharing my screen and hand back to the facilitator uh, for a Q&A session if you have any such things. And I've seen some pop in whilst they've been distracting me in the corner. So <laughs> great to hear that there are some. That's right. Taylor, We've over to good, you. We've got some good questions or coming John, in. I'm actually, that's right, I'm actually going to take over for Taylor. He had a, a, just a technical issue that kind of took him out for a second. So sure I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and help you out with the Q&A. Um, we've got some... Uh, some great feedback coming in through the chat too. It sounds like it's, I, I only caught like the last bit of it, but it was a really cool session what I heard. Um, so let's start with a, let's start with a, a question that comes in, first of all, um, from Jay, he's asking, how can we get the DemoFest exclusive digital download? He doesn't see a place to click or like or anything like that. It's exciting, isn't it? I'll tell you what you can do. What you can do is this, go to, your browser and type in mark.technology. And you're right, making a clickable link on a, on a screen share was impossible. Uh, but mark.technology in your browser, press go and uh, scroll down, you'll see it there. Fantastic. All right. So go ahead and mark that one as answered. And uh, so let's see. Um, Oops, I think I marked the wrong one answer. So how many stories are in a presentation? This comes from Michael. How many stories are in a presentation? Just one overall story or are there multiple smaller stories? It's a really, really good question. Uh, thank you very much for asking that because there are multiple. Um, it depends what the message is that you're crafting. Sometimes you can have an entire day of presentations. Um, and if you made the sections between 11 o'clock and 3 p.m. all painful, well, I mean, they'd probably just say, all right, you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> because you would never get to the be the hero bit. But worked into that, you can add a bit of tension and then release it with a bit of hero. And then a bit of tension and then it release it with a bit of hero. So, uh, yeah. Great question, and uh, yeah, so I think definitely both is the answer. Fantastic. All right, so uh, how this comes from Charles. How do you craft stories for different audiences in a single session? Executives, SMEs, frontline administrators might have different issues and or tensions that need to be resolved. They do. Thank you for that question. Really interesting question, and in fact works with the previous one as well. When you have multiple stakeholders in the room, they will have that thing in their heart that they desperately want to see because it causes them pain every day. This is why as pre-sales folk, we must get discoveries right. And we must understand the pains from the customer's perspective. Because then you can talk to different people in the room at different times. And you can say, we're going to talk about the procure to pay process now. And you go through that and you understand the pains, uh, but you solve them, it's fine, and then you come to the next person. Depending on who is in the room and what the subject of the presentation is, you might just pick to do, do a few. But overall, you can also run your whole day as, or the whole period that you have with that customer, as we really understand you, we love you, that's at the start. And then we really get that there's some things that need solving otherwise you wouldn't have invited us here to talk about this stuff um and but we can help you with that so don't worry and then leave that on a very very high this is this is the benefit this is what your company will look like if if you let us help you very so cool I hope that answered your question um obviously i'm around uh on linkedin if you want to ask more very cool. What actually, that was, that was actually my, uh, my next question because we're running right up against our hard stop here. Um, so if people want to connect with you and ask more questions, because there's some great questions that we, you know, obviously we never have time to get to all of the fantastic questions in a session like this. But um, if they want to reach out and ask you directly, um, how can they get hold of you? They can do so by going to mark.technology. Contact, there's contacts on there. Also, just underneath the DemoFest link uh, on my website, there is a link to my LinkedIn. So you'll find me really, really easily. Also, why not share your questions on the Consensus Scaling Pre-Sales group 
that everyone will be sent out. And then it won't just be me, it'll be the whole world of people helping and connecting. Love it. All right. So thanks for the thanks for the shout out there. So I just actually posted the uh, the link to the to the LinkedIn group, the consensus LinkedIn group. There. Brilliant. Look at that. And, Planning. Uh, yeah, there we are. All right. So, hey, I want to really thank you for, for this session. It was one of the most unusual and inventive sessions that I've seen, Mark. Fantastic job. Happy um, to be memorable. And thank you very much, everybody, for listening. <laughs> Very good, very good. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna uh, just quick shout out to the upcoming sessions uh, that are coming up. Um, one is by the esteemed uh, John, C I'm just kidding. <laughs> what a guy. Uh, so I'm, I, what a guy, I know, handsome as well. Face for radio, as they say. So um, we have, uh, I'll be covering a study that we did on sales engineering compensation and workload. And uh, we've got Chris White, who is very well, well known in the, in the pre-sales world. If you haven't seen, checked out Chris White's um, uh, material, uh, it's undoubtedly going to be better than mine. So uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you guys all soon. I'm going to end this session just so everybody's aware you're going to have to um, exit out of this session and click on the link to uh, join the next session. If you're having trouble finding your link, you can just go into the DemoFest website, go into the uh, session description and there's there's help there uh, in case you're having trouble finding your link that'll take you right in. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Mark.